Hey guys, it's Aram. So today we are going to be discussing negotiation and all of the stuff that I've learned throughout the years to get me what I want. So I have a lot of things on my list. You know, sis always comes prepared. And the first one is why am I qualified to speak about negotiation? So besides from just naturally, I think being a very strong negotiator, I did a course in America um, when I was studying at Emory University as part of my overall business degree. And it was about negotiation. And guys, it changed my life. My professor was amazing. She was so badass. And she taught me so many different things about anchoring, about body language. And I've applied them not just to business scenarios or academic situations, but actually to my real life. So I'm just literally giving you guys the information that she's given me and the stuff I've learned from experience and stuff that my dad has also told me because I just went into the living room and I asked him and he added a couple more onto my list. So I'm going to be sharing those with you. I have to say though, guys, this is probably the only thing of true value that I academically learned throughout my entire degree. Like I was entranced by this course. It was so life changing. So yeah, I'm really glad I can finally share this with you. Okay, so number one on my list is anchoring. And this is the most important thing I would definitely say. This refers to who puts the number out there first. So for instance, if I wanna buy something for one pound and the person there wants to sell it for 10 pounds, I wanna anchor the conversation initially towards the lower end of that scale. So I'm gonna put in maybe one or I'm gonna start even below that and I'm gonna say I want it for free. This means that the conversation is always gonna be fixated around this end of the scale. I'll give you guys an example of how I do this in real life. So for instance, if someone says, oh God, I really, I have no idea. It's so hot today. I have no idea how many degrees it is. And I'm like, really, you have no idea? And they're like, no, not a clue. And then I'll say to them, okay, so if it's a sunny day, like in springtime in London, we know it's gonna be around like maybe 15, 16 degrees. I'll say to them, okay. And you'll give two really, really extreme examples, right? You, is it like one degree or is it like a hundred degrees? And that anchoring kind of made people realize like the spectrum on which things could be on and it helps them place them a little bit better. Even if like, that's so outrageous for me to say, is it a hundred degrees? But I try this every single time someone is unable to give me an estimate and it works a hundred percent of the time. Now this I learned from a case study that we did in my class. It's called widening the pie. So there was this one situation Every time in this negotiation class, we had to pair up with people, we'd be given a scenario, we'd have to go outside of the classroom and negotiate it. We'd have to come back and we'd give the results. I remember I was paired with this girl, I absolutely hated. And I made a really, really big error. So when I was negotiating with her, I was so fixated on her getting as little as possible, and this is really bad, that I didn't focus on myself getting as much as possible. So the next time we went into the class, obviously we'd given the results, she plotted them on a graph. And my partner had done the worst out of everyone, but I only had achieved average in terms of the amount of things that I got out of the negotiation. And this lesson, it really stuck with me because I allowed my emotions to get the better of what was the bigger picture. So what I wanna teach you guys is opening the pie. So if we come into a situation and we're saying, hey, I would like to buy this from you, this is how much you wanna pay for it. It might be a matter of one slice of pie that we're arguing over, this one product and how much we're gonna charge for it. If you can widen the pie and say, you know what, if you give me this price, I will actually do a good review for you online and I will take some content for you so you can post product pictures on your website that you might not have been able to do. You've increased the amount of things that you're able to offer that person and it can happen both ways. You know what, I'm not gonna give you this one slice, I'm gonna give you half a slice, but let me tell you why, because in the future, I'm gonna be able to have more pies and I'll give you one pie in the future. You really wanna use the, the constraints of time and break them. So don't just consider what's in the present moment. Think about what they could give you one day, what you could give them one day, and obviously agree to it, as well as opening the pie, because it shouldn't be a situation where it's you versus them, as it was with me and that girl. And to that girl, I don't know what your name is, but if you're watching this, I'm really sorry that I embarrassed you and you got the least in the class, because <laughs> I embarrassed myself, because I only got average and like, I was doing pretty good in that class and I was like, oh wow, like knocks off my pedestal, what is happening? So it was definitely a really good life lesson for me. The next thing guys, I want you to really, really listen up. Now, a lot of the time you think, oh, I'm going into a negotiation. For instance, if it's you going into a new job and you're gonna 
go and negotiate your salary, you think, right, I've got to be aggressive. I've got to be direct. I've got to be really, really stubborn and all of these types of things. And that's really not the way the negotiation works. Now you need to know yourself in order to be able to ascertain the best form of negotiation because there's lots of different negotiating styles. You can be a very aggressive negotiator. You can be a very emotional negotiator. You can be a logical one. You can be, um, you know, delivering things with humor. The worst thing that you can possibly do though is not play to your own strengths. So let me give you an example. If I was to walk into a negotiation with a blazer and my glasses on, because I don't know, well, I don't have glasses. These are blue light glasses. Because I'm not dressed like myself, I'm not feeling like myself, it's really, really unlikely that I'm going to be able to perform to my best ability because I'm not focused enough about the business case at hand. I'm focused on how I'm portraying myself. And guys, when you're negotiating, you don't want to be distracted. So having said that, make sure you're going into the situation feeling like yourself because we don't want anyone to be acting. That is the last thing that you want on your mind. Now, let me give you guys an example of myself. So obviously, you know, I've been brought up um, in a male dominated household. At the same time, I'm able to switch into that kind of nurturing and a more emotional side of things. Not one is better than the other. You just need to realize which elements of your personality that you can draw out as per the situation. And this isn't a matter of changing yourself, but the elements of yourself that are already existing within you, which ones of those to bring out. Empathy is really key when it comes to negotiation because you want to fully, fully understand all the information, all of the motivations for the person on the other side of the table. So the first thing that you need to do before you guys get down to the numbers is what are you looking to get out of this negotiation? Let me give you a personal example. As an influencer, obviously I get a lot of collaborations and it's got to a point where I had been seeking management. So this is people to negotiate collaborations on my behalf and they take a certain amount of commission from that. Now there's a lot of things at play in this types of relationship. I personally wasn't too concerned about the commission. I was more so concerned, is this person able to understand my needs, understand my audience and get the types of products that I would be willing to promote? I didn't really care too much about the financial side of things. Obviously that was like a concern, but a secondary concern. There's other people that wouldn't really care about the types of products they're promoting, the brands they're working with. They just wanna get the best deal possible. So had I not spoken to them about my goals, they might have come into the situation and been trying to like hand me down with negotiate like a commission and stuff like that whereas they didn't even realize what was important for me was do they get me do they get my audience do they understand my brand but the next one is important understanding who is the decision maker the worst thing and i'm sure we've all been in this situation when you're having a like problem with like a restaurant and you're complaining to the waiter and they're just like stood there listening to it all 10 minutes down the line of you ranting they turn around they say hey like I'm really sorry, let me get my manager because I can't do anything to take this off your bill. And you're just like, so what you wanna do is make sure that the person you're speaking to is the decision maker. And I'm giving you as many examples as I can. So it's not just restricted to like an office negotiation type of environment. Cause this, this stuff, like guys, so when I tell you, my friends know me as Professor Finessa, like that is my nickname. It has been since I was like, 18 years old even younger like my dad has always brought me up to finesse situations so this is something that like i very much think is so important to be able to apply these academic learnings and studies into your daily life because a win is a win at the end of the day guys the next one is being aware of your body language body language is important and it, honestly it is to some extent like a completely different language what i find a lot is when people want to stall and act like they're casual they drink a drink and this is a personal pay hate of mine. I don't know why it annoys me so much when people drink drink drinks when they're trying to stall. But anyway, there are a lot of things that you can analyze about the situation. Is Are they sat there like this? They clearly don't want to budge. Are they sat there open? And what you can do is use that learning for yourself. Make sure you're sat there in an open position. Don't be leaning too forward because it might look a little bit eager. Don't be leaning too back because it looks a little bit relaxed. It looks like you're not really interested in the situation but make sure that you're honestly aware of the way you're coming across because sometimes when I was younger, I'd go into interviews and I would like, I, I would like sit there like this and I'd have my legs crossed and I wasn't aware at the time, obviously you lack self-awareness when you're younger as to how I was coming across as very closed off. So now I just try and sit in a very neutral manner because if you're not aware of your body language, then try and sit neutral. So at least you're not giving off a bad impression instead of focusing on trying to give a good one without knowing what you're doing. My final thing is, ascertain all the facts and make sure that you're giving a business case 
not necessarily an emotional case as to why you need something. So don't kind of sit there and be like, I really need this. My boss is going to be so mad at me if I don't get this. And like, you know, I really need the extra money because this, this, and this. Because at the end of the day, if that person isn't emotionally driven, it's unlikely that them being in a business environment is going to be able to help you with that. Obviously, there are other situations in which this is a really, really great strategy to go for. Do not get me wrong. I do the emotional thing all the time. Sometimes though, you do need to turn on the business case and you need to say, you know what, not only will this give you more sales, more exposure, da, 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 but it's gonna build on our relationship and we're gonna be able to work together in the future and grow our brands and our reputations and all of that kind of stuff. So again, this comes down to widening the pie. If you're giving a business case, you need to know all of the facts so you can appeal to what is most appropriate for them, whatever that mo like whatever motivates them. Then you need to anchor the conversation, start with giving the number, and then from there, wiggle. Do not be that person who's just completely rigid and doesn't want to do that because at the end of the day, you've got to think long term. That's going to harm you in the future because they're not going to want to negotiate with you. They're going to see your name on LinkedIn working at a company or see your name linked into an email and be like, ooh, I don't want to go there because it just really doesn't show that you're listening. And at the end of the day, you could make that mistake that I made where I was so focused on making sure this girl got the lowest grade that I didn't focus on giving myself the highest grade. So if I could conclude this for you guys, make sure the number one thing is that you're widening the pie. Let us all win more. Let me give you more and let you give me more. So we both leave the situation with more together because that is the best outcome. You know, if there was only one and one thing to take and you both took it away, if you double that for two and two, that's four wins. Like, why would you not want four wins? That's it. I hope that helped. Save this video, comment down below your negotiation tips. I'm sure you have so many. Let's help each other grow as businesses. And of course, oh God, the lighting is so gross. Here is a hug from me to you. Mwah. Have a lovely day. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. And if you want more like business advice, I am more than happy to give that to you. Mwah.